It's the 15th year of Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship, and like the beginning of all seasons, we kick things off on the streets of Long Beach. After a year where the series saw James Dean dominate the rest of the field, the drivers have prepared in the offseason to make the changes needed in order to dethrone the Irish driver. Who's going to kick off the season with the win at the biggest event of the year? Will it be Chris Forsberg, Frederick Osbo, Odie Bakshi, or one of the other top 32 drifters in the world? Let's find out only on Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship. and welcome to the streets of Long Beach for round one of the Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship. I'm Jared Dienda. Well, we're not only kicking off another season, but we're celebrating 15 years of Formula Drift competition. Familiar faces, new cars, same great action, and of course, the very unforgiving walls. Well, our number one qualifier, Peter Vincic, who is the most recent victor from Irwindale last year. And then number two, defending champion, his teammate, Wordhouse Drift Team Falcon Tire driver, James Dean. But there's a lot of familiar faces that are in the top 16 already. Vaughn Ginn Jr., Frederick Osba, Odie Bakshis, the list goes on and on. But before we go to head-to-head -to -head top 16 action, I throw it down to my co-host, my main man, Ryan Sage. All right, well, thank you, Jared. I am down here on the track, the Long Beach Grand Prix Street Course, kicking off the 15th season by talking about what the judges are expecting from these drivers. Now, first of all, the drivers need to come down that back straight, initiate, get right back on the throttle, get to that first touch and go, and then swoop across the track to that first outside zone, maintaining speed to that second outside zone before they start to decelerate, get to that third touch and go, and then that final inside clip, mashing it through the finish line. We're going to see a lot of action out on this track, but before we get to that, let's go talk to some of the drivers and see what they think about this Long Beach course. I'm absolutely pumped to be back in Long Beach. I couldn't think of a better place to start off Formula Drift. Downtown, sun is shining. We're in the city, people are out on the balcony, yelling, screaming. We'll be a sold out crowd. As a track, it's very technical, probably the most technical one of the Formula Drift Championship. But the tricky part is you cannot see around the first corner. And it's the same thing when you get to the second corner because the K-rails are so high, there's sponsor banners up there and uh, the, even the people are sitting quite high. So you cannot see around your next corner. So you really have to know the track in your mind and be able to predict what's coming before you see it. This is the most important event of the year. This is where you set the tone of the whole season. This is where you show who's the boss. This is where you want to build your confidence for the rest of, of the 2018 schedule. Long Beach is the one to win. Drifting is the only motorsport in the world that is based on judging. So let's break down how that works. In head-to-head -head battles, the lead driver is supposed to run a specific judging line with as much angle as possible. The lead driver is setting the pace, but the chase driver is supposed to utilize the lead driver as a moving clipping point. Wherever the lead goes, the chase should go too. After two runs with each driver leading once, the driver that was the most consistent, most aggressive, and was able to show clear dominance over the other driver will win the matchup. For rules, criteria, and more information on Formula Drift, head to www.formulad.com. All right, Ryan, well, here we go. The bracket is set. Peter Visick, our number one qualifier, going against Matt. Put him in a coffin. Coming to us from the Pacific Northwest, you can see it. Qualifying first versus qualifying 16. Well, Peter, starting off the 2018 season very strong with that number one qualification, but every battle in the top 32 field is a tough one. Here we go. Well, Matt Kaufman, a serious competitor, has made a name for himself over the past few years, so he is not a pushover by any means. Peter Vincic initiates into that first turn. Piotr tapping the wall and coming unstuck a little bit. Now back on it, and look at Matt Kaufman kind of cutting the line, trying to take away that advantage. Matt Kaufman not too affected by that extension all the way out to that touch and go and into that final clip. Peter Vincic knocks it out of the way. Let's take a look at this again here, Ryan. Well, the Worthouse team really showing how well built those vehicles are. You can see on board here from Piotr Vincic, right here, Matt Kaufman closing the door around that last inside clip. All right, Matt Kaufman will get the clean air as he will lead Peter Vincic. We'll give chase, and we got a clean start. Send it. Nice initiation here by Matt Kaufman, now coming into this first touch and go. Let's see how Peter attacks. 
Nice job by Kaufman getting all the way out there to touch and go. Transitions back, doesn't get all the way to the outside zone, but now bringing it out about a half a car length off that second outer zone. Great proximity here by Pietar, closing the door through this last inside clip, and now the judges have seen both runs. The judges digesting both runs, a bird's eye view on a beautiful day, the making of a great event. Who's going to be the first victor to advance on into the great eight? Well, nobody just yet because they're going one more time. Let's see him go again. Peter Visick and Matt Kaufman. Peter Visick will lead. Matt Kaufman giving chase. Well, both drivers made a couple mistakes in their chase position. Let's see who can make improvements here on the one more time battle. Don't leave in the judges' hands. Peter Visick with a nasty initiation. Matt Kaufman not phased. Peter keeps it off the wall but goes side to side. Nice job. Much better lead here from Pieter getting deep into the zone but not touching the wall in the degree that he did in the first run. And now you can see that separation here as Matt Kaufman was left playing catch up. Yeah, you saw Kaufman. It looked like he double initiated there right into that second outer zone. You saw him throw a little bit more angle at it. See, so take a look at this perspective. Nice job, has to back off, but Kaufman will now lead. Visick will give chase. Through the chicane, Matt Kaufman heading down. Nice job, early initiation, back on throttle, great start. Matt Kaufman with that Ford VA powered S13, doesn't get all the way out to the touch and go, fills that outer zone, but cannot shake the Polish driver. Great proximity here by Pieter Vensek through the smoke line and rounding this last inside clip, leaving a good notion for the judges. Good execution by Kaufman in the lead position, but Peter Vincic very dominant in the chase. That's gonna be the deciding factor in my eyes. Let's go to the judges and who is advancing onto the grade eight, or are they gonna go one more time? Nope, we have a clear cut winner. Peter Vincic gets the win. P, I'm very happy that I managed to advance. Uh, it was hot for me in the car. <laughs> that whole situation was a bit nervous, but uh, I'm in top eight. I'm moving forward, so yeah. We're only one battle deep here on the streets of Long Beach into the top 16 when we come back. More drifting action for the largest event of the year. Strap on some new tires and fill the tanks when we return. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Black Magic. Own your shine. By Air Force. Aim high. And by. The Formula Drift app. Download the FD app in the iOS or Android store now. Welcome back, Drift fans. We have a packed house here just in the shadow of the arena here. So much history here on the streets of Long Beach, but Formula Drift entering our 15th season and two veterans of the sport, Daijiro Yoshihara versus Ryan Turk. Both drivers having solid 2017 seasons with Daijiro Yoshihara coming off a second place finish at the final event at Irwindale Speedway. Ryan Turk will lead. He's in that 2JZ powered Toyota Racing 86 and Daijiro Yoshihara in the turbocharged V8 BRZ. Nice initiation there by Turk getting right back on throttle, but missing that touch and go. Better job on that second outside zone, but right there, Dai getting loose in the chase position. Dai Yoshihara very shallow on the transition, cuts through the smoke. Looks like he does gain some ground, but he takes a clipping point with him. Well, you can see a little bit of struggling in the chase position for Daijiro Yoshihara coming through that outside zone there and then trying to fight his way through the smoke line against Ryan Turk. Let's change up the order. Dai Yoshihara will now lead Ryan Turk giving chase. I have to say the needle is going the direction of Ryan Turk as far as advantage. Dai through the chicane, heading down into initiation, back on throttle quickly there. Ryan Turk trying not to let him get away as Dai reaches out to that touch and go. Dai gets out to touch and go, and then he counters back, but Ryan Turk is right in the shadow of this turn 14 distribution Falcon Tire Subaru. Great lead run here by Daijiro Yoshihara, but you can see that Ryan Turk has a lot of grip in his vehicle, and he's able to stay pretty door to door with Daijiro Yoshihara. All right, so there are the two runs, and now next, the judges' verdict. Who's moving on? Ryan Turk unanimously gets the win. It feels awesome, man. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's really heartbreaking if you go on 32 or, or 16 here at the first round. It kind of hurts your points a little bit. Uh, so being at the top eight, you know you're in the hunt, and um, we're ready to move on now. We want some podium. We want some champagne. It's an all Falcon Tire battle. Justin Pollock, who, Ryan, you talk about it. Justin Pollock looking and feeling a lot more comfortable in this vehicle. And Odie Bakshi's back in the old faithful S chassis, but changed up the looks a little bit. Here we go, JTP versus Odie Bakshi's. Well, you can see the comfort level of JTP by this initiation here. Very smooth and fluid. He's back on throttle quickly, trying to get out to that touch and go, but comes up a little bit short, and now touching the wall. Well done, but Odie Bakshi's not shaking at all. His chase game has just quickly become some of the best in the Formula Drift paddock. Both of these drivers 
Cruz used their last year experience to really make minor changes to the vehicle to get the best out of their performance, and you're seeing that manifest right here with these two Falcon drivers. Yeah, these both these drivers have really just stepped up their games, and, and having that equity in their vehicles, you can see that level of comfort. Here we go, Odie out front, JTP in the chase position. Initiating together, back on throttle is Odie Bocci. He's coming a little bit with big angle here, and now cannot hold it and JTP flies on through. It'll be an incomplete for Odie. Odie unfortunately loops it there. JTP just going through the rest of the course. He does not need to in order to advance on because the mistake happened in front of him. But you see Odie Bakshi overcook it and he got burnt. That means JTP will be getting the victory. Let's go to the judges and make it official. There you have it. JTP, Justin Pollock gets the win. Being in grade eight, you know, I feel back with the teal and blue. Grade eight, first round, looking forward to, uh, you know, whoever I got next and, you know, may God be with us and have some good battles. Moving on to our next battle, true international affair, 2015 Formula Drift champ, the Hammer, the Norwegian Hammer to be exact, Frederick Osbo versus Christoph Blush from Latvia. Well, Blush was most definitely the biggest story coming out of Irwindale last year, debuting that vehicle after his other vehicle malfunctioned. Now let's see it in competition. Here we go. A freshman season for Osbo's vehicle, that Toyota Corolla transitioning properly well done. Christoph Blush right there with that beautiful E92 Eurofighter. Osbo doing what he does best, heading out this battle right here with a near perfect lead run, just missing that last inside flip by about a foot, but outside that, a strong performance overall by both competitors. Frederick Osbo just performing surgery on the track, and you gotta assume Christoph Blush and Osbo, they have kind of a storied past in previous seasons where uh, Blush has been pretty vocal about Osbo's driving. So, now he's getting the clean air. How's he gonna do with Osbo in the rear view mirror? Back on throttle is Blush. Big smoke line being created here. Gets a little bit shallow on that section of the course. And look at Osbo, really eyeing him up door to door through that second outer zone. Well done by Frederick Osbo. Again, as you said, Blush not getting all the way out there, allowing Osbo to gain that ground. Solid proximity from Osbo. Well, Osbo is the heavy favorite coming into the series to dethrone James Dean, and you're seeing why the fans think so. Osbo in the chase and the lead, strong performance. And now he gets the win. Going into grade eight, we're facing JTP, uh, one of the OGs of this track. He's going wall to wall, really stylish runs. Uh, it's gonna be tough to match that, but I'm gonna give it everything I got and hopefully we have the better car to pull it off here. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Nexon Tire, driving tomorrow. By Achilles Radio, tires you can trust. And by Falcon Tires. Welcome back to round one of the Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship. Cars look great standing still. They look even better ripping in a Terran out here on the streets of Long Beach. Let's move on to our next battle. James Dean, the defending champion, the machine, versus a former champion as well, Michael Essa and that Essa Autosports Achilles Tire BMW. Well, this was the guy of the 2017 season. Came in six podiums and started off the season strong with a second place qualification. Here we go, James Dean and Michael Essa. Can he win again? He won here last year. Look at James Dean back at it again like a broken record. That touch and go to that first outer zone done nearly flawlessly, but look at Michael Essa. You can see here, James Dean unable to run away like he was last year. You can tell the drivers have made some changes. Michael Essa very smooth. Watch him in the transition. You see him working the wheel. Very calm, poetic chase job there by Michael Essa. Now Essa will lead James Dean with that Irish flag of waving. Is the luck of the Irish gonna be on his side? Well, it usually always comes down to the chase for James Dean. Let's see what he does here. Getting in the pocket there. Michael Essa back on throttle and out to that touch and go. Great job. All right, Essa gets out to that outer zone under the bridge. James Dean doesn't get all the way out there and Essa sheds a back bumper. James Dean not affected, tucks in and wraps it around that final clip. Essa putting up a great fight here. You can see James Dean is able to close the door towards that last inside clip. Michael Essa, solid performance in the lead. Let's go to the judges. Is James Dean gonna continue you on no they are both going on one more time let's see him run again james dean will lead essa will give chase well already we're noticing with these strong performances that the drivers have made the james dean and worthhouse team adjustment 
We can see here as James Dean initiates, he gets out to the touch and go. Now he's fighting back strong against Michael Essa. Just dips the tail into that touch and go, 71.2 miles per hour. Michael Essa doesn't care if he's a champion. He wants to dethrone him. Wow, right there you can see Michael Essa took a big risk there, getting door to door. He had to back off for a second, but again, we're seeing strong performances by both drivers in the lead and chase position. Just the caliber of driving. Look at Essa. He gains, you see him back off, then regain that proximity. Just solid execution. I'm impressed by all the drivers here today, and this is going to be an exciting season. Here we go. Michael Essa will lead James Dean, giving chase. Michael Essa, nice early initiation, but right in the pocket is James Dean from the onset, really gaining proximity here through this section of the course, but now falling back and not able to hit those zones. Yeah, James Dean, to be quite honest, not as, not as smooth as Michael Essa, but he is right there. Ryan, which way do you think the needle's gonna go? Tough call here for the judges. You can see the smoke, a huge factor here for the chase driver. Michael Essa did not hit that second outer zone, but Dean also making some mistakes. And here we go, it's unanimous. James Dean gets the win. Like, I like to take it one step at a time, but uh, knowing that Peter, my teammate, is also in the grade eight, and uh, it would be incredible if we both made it all the way, but that's definitely a long way from here, uh, and uh, we need to definitely uh, Keep pushing hard and hope, hope for the best. The defending champion is already in the grade eight. Who's gonna join him? Matt Field, the beast from the Bay, debuting a new car. Going as Alec Honnadel, who's changed teams, but is an old faithful in that supercharged V8. Here we go, great looking car there from Matt Field. Matt Field through the chicane. You can see Alec Honnadel keeping him close. Snappy initiation from Field, right back on throttle, and now touching out to that touch and go. Matt Field gets out to the touch and go. The Permatex S14 of Honnadel playing catch up here. Matt Field doesn't get out to that second outer zone, but let's put a bow on it. Look at Honnadel right there. Honnadel coming through that last inside flip you can see Matt Field losing a little bit of angle there and as you mentioned Jared not getting out to that second outer zone but overall these vehicles look very strong for their first run out in competition fierce competition again the bright yellow on the Corvette of Matt Field but Honnadel's gonna get the clean air look at him qualifying seventh tenth fairly equally matched these vehicles are just so fast and you can see that here as Field really having to make some adjustments behind Alec Honnadel at 66.2 miles per hour. Honnadel, you have to assume, has a lot more confidence here. Matt Field debuting the car and just wants to make it past round one with the car coming unscathed. And you can see Honnadel throwing in. Looks like Matt Field makes a correction there towards the end, Ryan. Honnadel not able to get full angle there on outside zone two. And you can see Field was very close. Had to make that adjustment there and it just caused him making a mistake. Going to the judges, Alec Honnadel unanimously gets the win. Well, we are plenty battles deep, but still more to come. Here in the top 16, Forrest Wang, we'll see if he literally gets nuts. In his Vape Tasia Achilles Tire S15, he's going against the former champ, that is Von Gittin Jr. It's a beautiful day here at Formula Drift. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Black Magic. Own your shine. By Nas Energy Drink with Complex 6 for high performance energy and enhanced mental focus. And by Nitto Tire, fueled by enthusiasts. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach. We custom built all this because next weekend is the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. But this weekend, we are partying on the streets here of 9, 10, 11 of that race course. Only two battles left. Who's going to join them in the great eight, Forrest Wang or Vaughn Gittin Jr.? Well, after sitting a season out, Forrest Wang is back. He qualified number three, but going up against Vaughn Gittin Jr. is a tall order. Well, Vaughn Gittin Jr. qualifying 19th, fairly low for him, given he does have a track record. In this vehicle, Forrest Wang initiates Vaughn Gittin Jr. In so look at Wang gets all the way out to the outer zone, kind of making it a straight line though. Yeah, lacking the angle is Wang in that touch and go, now kind of getting into it here, but getting obviously having to make some adjustments given the way that Wang was driving out front. So both drivers making some mistakes in run number one. Well, Forrest Wang in that off season, when he took that year off, he made some modifications to his vehicle. He actually put on a smaller turbo to create the speed for his vehicle so he could be competitive and really go for a championship. Here we go, Vaughn's now out front and Forrest Wang in chase. Through the chicane is Vaughn Gittin Jr. Forrest Wang trying to not let him get away. Snappy initiation there by Gittin. But look at Wang falling behind now and now having to cut the line. Vaughn Gittin Jr., the professional fun haver, pop, lock, and drop it. Look at the three wheel motion from Vaughn Gittin Jr. Oh man, and they loop it. Well, you can see the car there, Jared, was really squatting, and Vaughn Gittin Jr. with that three wheel motion had too much angle there, couldn't hold the turn, and he spins out. So that will mean Forrest Wang will move on. Let's make it official. Forrest Wang advances onto the grade eight. 
track feels really slick right now. I don't know if it's because the temperature's coming up so much, but it's getting greasy out there. And I mean, you, <laughs> you just gotta keep your car off the wall. So I mean, you know, throw as much angle as you can and keep it, keep it on the track. Here we go, our final battle of the top 16. Chris, the Force Forsberg, three-time FD champion, qualifying sixth. He's going against Chelsea Denofa. Say howdy, get rowdy. The RTR on his camp stands for ready to rowdy. Here we go. Here we go, Forsberg through the chicane, down that long straight. Look at Denofa keeping it tight, initiating together. Forsberg now back on throttle, reaching out to that touch and go. And looks like Denofa got a little bit affected there. Yeah, Denofa was sweating him early, had to back off. Forsberg gets out of the outer zone. But look at Chelsea, right there in the shadow, that NOS Energy Drink 370Z. Denofa surging towards the end here. Oh, and makes a mistake on that last inside clip. Right here, you can see maybe a little bit of rubbing there by Denofa, but right here on this last inside clip, Jared, not able to hold the line. All right, so Chelsea Denofa will be out front. Chris Forsberg in the chase position. Denofa really needs to put down a strong lead run in order to offset that mistake. Well, you can see Denofa back on throttle a bit earlier than Forsberg here, giving an opportunity to chase. Now Forsberg closing the door, but he's on a much tighter line. But again, Denofa does have that incomplete. Yeah, Forsberg may be giving himself too much room here as Denofa brings around that final clip. And man, he almost looped it again there, Ryan. Well, first event of the year, some drivers still getting the jitters out here. And you can see from above, Forsberg clearly on a tighter line. But with that incomplete, it's a little bit hard to overcome. And there it is, Chris Forsberg unanimously gets the win. Uh, you know, this time it worked out for my advantage with the overall spin on Chelsea. But uh, yeah, I mean, just feeling great to be moving on to top eight and hopefully beyond that. Well, there you have it, Drift fans. The top 16 is over. That means next stop is the great eight. And that will be on our next episode. A lot of familiar faces. James Dean, Peter Vincic, Frederick Osbo, three-time champ Chris Forsberg, JTP, eight drivers, but there can be only one. Join us on the next episode as we continue the party on the street here at round one of the Formula Drift Blackmagic Pro Championship. In association with Formula Drift, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.